what are some good goals for an intermediate chess player who can only play online? So I would say trying to play longer time controls if you guys want to improve. Time controls like uh, 15 minutes per side with a 10 second increment is ideal. Playing those games are longer. Don't try to emulate what streamers play, which is typically faster time controls. I mean, I'm playing three minutes per side here, guys. This is not ideal for improvement. Streamers do this because they have a ton of experience and mostly they're they're looking to entertain more than you know take things as seriously as possible. But if you wanna get better at chess, you need to play longer games. You need to play games where you can afford to pause and think for a minute, two minutes, maybe even five minutes at a time at a critical moment in the game. So do that. Try to analyze your games a little bit afterwards. Use that Lee Chess study feature. You can upload games and you can add annotations. You can use the engine, you can use the database. Also for intermediate players, I think doing puzzles makes a lot of sense. You're still at a level where that's gonna help out a lot. This position really resembles a Karakon, by the way. Pawns on e6 and c6. Uh, let's take that guy and go here. Which pre-move time system do I prefer, Lee Chess or Chess.com? Hmm. That's a good question. I would say probably Chess.com, to be honest, because I think you have to have some time elapse on your clock for it to be totally fair. Okay, now I'm going to take check. I'm going to get a slightly, slightly better endgame here, perhaps. I don't know if I can make much of this, though. This is going to be tough. Let's go h5. Because in a real game, you would never play a move and have no time elapse on your clock, right? Like, that's just not going to happen. So the unlimited pre-moves are not realistic. It's great for the players who are super fast, like the Andrew Tangs, the Daniel Naroditskis of the world, even though they're incredible players, regardless of that. Uh, but I think chess.com, the way that they do it, is a little bit more realistic. Let's take and go here. I'm trying to defend this pawn with my king so I can free up my rook. Now rook d5 is a threat, guys. I'm going to go after this pawn. Ooh, okay. He's going to have to go passive here. Let's check figuring out what the best way to try to win a pawn here. Should I go g5? No, that's unnecessary. Feels like there's a way to win a pawn in this position, but maybe not. His rook coming to e4 just defends everything. It's kind of funny. It looks so bad, but it does. I really don't know. Let's play c5. I'm just going to see what he's going to do. e4 is a super rook. Defends four pawns at once. Exactly. Three pawns, but point taken. Okay, I have an idea, though, now. I'm going to go here. And when he plays super rook to e4, I'm going to go king c6, uh, king d7, c6, and try to threaten king d5 eventually. What if he just put his rook completely in prison? Rook e4 followed by c4. And just slam the door on that rook entirely. That would be pretty funny. Okay, he's going to go there. Let's back up. Remind him that this is weak. Make him go there. Okay, this, this could happen, guys. Rook e4, king d7, and then c4 looks pretty natural to kick my rook away. Let's see if he does it. This looks like an incredibly natural move. But it's going to completely suffocate his own rook. Okay, now he's kind of in this scenario anyways. So when I move this... No, i got to be more cagey. B5? Yeah, B5 maybe. Alright, let's do that. He's taking off a sant. That's a rule for those of you guys who don't know. Go here. B4? Kind of have to. C4? Oh man, we're so close to winning. King moves. Here. King here, here. And I win the endgame. Wow. 
Now, if he wants to free his rook, he's probably going to play this now, but take, take, and I think I just win this endgame. Because my king is more active. Oh, that's a little bit tricky. No, no, that, that should be winning. That should be winning. Yeah. Okay. I can throw this check in first if I want. But now nah, let's not let's not get cute. Trade. And here. King activity. Now the only thing I have to watch is like a D5 type move, but it's it's not gonna work. Yeah, it's not gonna work. Check. I'm pushing back. And let's go after the, the base of the chain. We're gonna leave that pawn. That pawn being the G pawn. And we're going to push our pawn. Check. We're going to make this real simple. I'm just going to go take this guy, actually. Just so I can pre-move some stuff. All right. And we get the mate. That was nice. I like how that one shaped up. The rook on e4 just ran out of, ran out of oxygen, really. Thank you, Ziff. Yeah, I think that was pretty instructive. Feels winning here. Uh, he could play rook d4 right at that moment I was showing. He could play rook d4 right here. But he loses e5. I think that'll be winning for black. Let's check. Okay, so the intrigue started right around here, I'd say, where I play the move G5. So this is the engine eval, guys. This is a super-duper strong computer saying what it thinks the best moves are, and it gives an evaluation in terms of pawns. So minus 1.8, that means the engine thinks that I'm better by 1.8 pawns. Anything above about 1 is a pretty significant advantage, often a winning advantage. So, the engine does approve of my position right around here. Likes king d7. Likes all this. b5. Okay. It says white should play b4 here. Actually doesn't think b5 is the best move. It wants me to go rook d2 right away with a similar idea. King here and then king d5. So this is the key, getting the king to d5. I can escape this way, but... I'm going to attack all his pawns. Still, b5 might be winning regardless. c4. Yeah, and to avoid the fate that he fell into in the game, he has to try rook d4 here. Take. Ah, oh, that, that's too funny here. Take a look at this. Top move from the engine is e4 at this moment. Putting my rook in prison. Now my rook can't move because white's controlling all these squares with pawns. The prisoner reversal. I could free it. I could play f5. And I'm still better, but that's white's best chance. We need a fan on fire emote? Yeah. Every time I run this stockfish, my computer fan... I've had the same desktop since 2013, guys. I'm getting a new one soon. But yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it works pretty hard when you fire up the engine. Hence, I've said, if ever I, I were to cheat, you guys would know my cover would be blown immediately because you would hear my fan in the background. Not that I would ever cheat, but... It's like face-off. Yeah, exactly. And then after this, rook down. Click this on again. Yeah, this is winning. Made in 25, the engine finds already. All right. King activity is huge in the endgame, guys. So the fact that my king is up here, threatening to go after white's g-pawn, that means pretty much lights out for white. Dubliz, zigzag. Hey, thank you for subbing two months. Thanks for always teaching us how to Dougie. <laughs> I don't know if I've taught you how to Dougie, but thank you, uh... Nonetheless, Dubliz. 